Hey there folks, today I'm going to talk about an album that meant an awful lot to me when I was young. Uh, I enjoyed it, used to play along with it on my guitar, I just thought the world of it. Um, it's one of my favorite double albums of all time, and today I still enjoy it, I still enjoy listening to it. Kenny Rogers and the First Edition present The Ballad of Calico. It was sort of like a country rock opera, if you will long story about the silver mining town of Calico in Southern California. And uh, the, let me go over some of the players on the album and then I'll talk about the songs and some other things. And the way the album is laid out also is very well done. Uh, the musicians were uh, Mickey Jones on drums and percussion. Mickey Jones, if you recall, uh, well, he played with a lot of people, but he's famously known for having played with Bob Dylan during the mid-60s, uh, you know, the electric concerts. We have Terry Williams on lead guitar and Dobro. Terry Williams, I remember him performing, being a very, very uh, entertaining stage personality uh, when I saw them live. Uh, rhythm guitars, we have Michael Murphy, or Michael Martin Murphy, who wrote the lyrics and the music on the album, as well as Larry Kanzler. He wrote also the, the music. We'll get to him in a moment. Also on rhythm guitar, we have Ken Vassy. Ken Vassy was a very powerful voiced gravelly voiced singer uh, somewhat like um, David Clayton Thomas of Blood Sweat and Tears had that powerful voice uh, Larry Kanzler on piano harpsichord and organ Larry Kanzler was also the music director and arranger for the album and for the for the uh, the for the for the band actually Larry Kanzler wonderful artist I'll get to talking about him shortly uh, on fiddle we have John Hartford you know the, the great fiddle player uh, on bass, we have Kenny Rogers and pedal steel Doyle Grisham. And on vocals, everybody. Kenny Rogers only sang on about one-third of, of the songs here. And other people sang on the other songs. And I think that's so that uh, since the, the album was about, the, the, ba about the, uh, the, the town, they wanted to give all of the different characters of the town a voice. And so they had a lot of other people singing the songs. Let me show you what the album looks like. It's a beautiful album. It has a, it looks sort of like a, a photo album, you know, or, a, you know, some kind of a scrapbook type thing, you know, with this uh, border here. And on the back, you have a photograph of the band in, in period dress uh, for the, you know, the late, 1800, late 1800s. And on the inside here, you have this really nice drawing of the town, you know, back in the day. They're in the mountains. And it came also with an insert. Uh, a nice booklet, written, of course, in old-fashioned style, you know. And on the back of the booklet, you have the players. You have, you have Kenny Rogers there, of course. Okay. You've got Terry Williams here. You have Mary Arnold. Uh, Mary Arnold eventually married uh, Roger Miller, the, the famous country singer. Here on, on this side, on the right, you have uh, Ken Vassy. And then here you have Mickey Jones. Mickey Jones went on to play uh, one of the characters in this TV show, Home Improvement. Perhaps you remember him with the long beard. And then down here you have the, it says here, the authors. You have over here, you have Michael Murphy, who goes also by Michael Martin Murphy. And then the composer here, Larry Kanzler, who was uh, instrumental in ma composing most of the music there, along with Michael Murphy. Interestingly enough, uh, shortly after this album, Larry Kanzler and Michael Murphy uh, teamed up together again to to compose one of the most popular songs of all time, a wildfire. She ran calling wildfire, and uh, of course it was a hit for Michael Murphy that was written by these two after having worked on this album. If you like that song, uh, you'll like some of this album because some of this album has that same uh, feel to it. Uh, Larry Kanzler has put out a few albums. He put out uh, in I guess in the nineties. Here's one called uh, Indian Paintbrush. And then here's one called Pacific Dreams. This was from 1988. Pacific Dreams, Larry Kanzler. Awesome composer. Very, very nice. Um, <clears throat> back in the day when I was a performing musician myself and I had my own webpage, I used to have a few side pages, you know, for, for musical enthusiasms. And one of them was for Larry Kanzler. And he found the page. He actually found it and contacted me. And we exchanged several emails over, you know, a couple of years there. And, and hey, Larry, if you're out there, hello. <laughs> I 
very nice man, uh, very, very uh, talented, wonderful composer. Um, I don't know, he just a, seemed to be a very nice person. Okay, on the inside of this insert, you had some really nice handwritten information about the town. Look, that's a, doesn't that look nice? And you have the photographs of the town here, you know. And then you also have uh, handwritten information about the songs as well as the lyrics to the songs. You know, little introductions to the songs and everything to tell you the background of where the songs came from. This was a rock opera, you know, country rock opera, but it was based on fact, an actual fact. And most of the songs were based upon, you know, a couple of books here I'll show you written about the town. You have Dorsey, the mail carrying dog there, the dog that carried the mail around the town when the mailman got sick, you know, and uh, it's really cool stuff, really cool. Yeah, uh, written lyrics written by here, Michael Martin Murphy, if you can see that there. Okay, okay. Now, I was living in Utah in the late 80s, and I had forgotten about, you know, Calico. I mean, I still listen to the album once in a while, but I, I kind of forgotten. I'd moved on and to other musical interests at that time, and you know, I was only living there about three years, and one day I decided I was going to drive to visit my sister in L.A., so I drove from Salt Lake City to L.A., and along the Highway 15 there, and, and I'm driving along in the middle of the desert, and all of a sudden I see a sign, Calico, Silver Mining Town. I'm like, whoa! You know, I was a big fan of the album. I said, this is awesome. I'm going to pull in here. So I, I, I went in there and spent some time and, um, you know, bought some, bought some uh, you know, postcards of the town. You know, you can go there today to visit the town. It's really quite, quite interesting. They've preserved it so well. I mean, they've done a really good job in preserving the town. It really feels cool to be there. Now, of course, now I was there in the late 80s, so I don't know what it's like now. I hope they haven't messed it up with too much cornball stuff, but maybe they did. I don't know. But back then, it was pretty awesome. Uh, Calico, Calico Ghost Town. I think this book right here, which was written in... Uh, let's see. Uh, this booklet is dedicated to the memory of the heroic silver pioneers whose daring and toil created Southern California's greatest silver camp, Calico. It was written in 1952. And I believe this book, I've read this book, I believe, I'm pretty sure this book is where a lot of the information came that was used in producing the album. There's a lot of photographs here, and including the photographs that were in the album as well. You know, and a lot of the stories here are basically the same stories you know that are we hear in the on the album there's also another book here that anyone can get uh, it's part of the images of america series you know are these books that come out about different towns this is a really good book if you're interested in calico it gives all it tons of photographs of the town a lot of historical information primarily photographs but there's there's also historical information as well really good stuff okay so if you're interested in the town i recommend that book there written by Page Payton, P-E-Y-T-O-N, Page Payton. Okay, so what else have I got to say here? Ballad of Calico uh, was the ninth or tenth album by first edition. Uh, it reached only 118, didn't sell at all. I mean, it did very poorly, didn't sell many copies at all. Um, Old Mojave Highway is Highway 15, like I said before. That goes right through. If you ever want to get there, you, you take Old Mojave Highway, Highway 15, uh, this is another thing I happened to find years and years ago. It's sort of like a large promotional uh, flyer uh, by Kenny Music of Canada. It says, we've been rolling strikes with the Kenny Riders in the first edition. All 26 programs of the first edition TV series Rolling on the River. They did a TV series from 1971 to 72 called Rolling on the River, later shortened to Rolling, which rolling like rolling with Rolling. Um, and it was a variety show. Everybody had variety shows back then. You know, Glenn Campbell, Bobby Goldsboro. You know, everybody had a variety show back then. So did Kenny Rogers in the first edition. You know, they'd have musical acts, uh, comedy sketches, things like that. They even did one one show. They devoted one entire show on Calico, where they went. The, the band went to the town and they played the music. You know, they mimed the music, of course, in the town. So they're performing the music, and. And Mickey Jones, uh, several years ago, sent me a DVD of that episode of Roland, uh, of, of the band being in that town and talking about it and all. Very good. Mickey just recently passed away this year, earlier. So anyhow, um, this is a promotional flyer. I don't know if you can see that. But I, I found this online several years ago. I thought it was pretty cool. 
It just goes to show you that the album was promoted. It just didn't sell. I think at the point in time when the album came out, uh, musical tastes were changing somewhat or something. I don't know. I really don't know. It did not sell at all. It's a shame. And it was never released on CD. That's a shame as well. Because people that love the album really, really love the album. It has almost like a cult-like following. People really enjoy it. So let me go over some of the tracks here for you. All right. Not that you need to know this, but uh, those of you who like this album might, might appreciate it. Okay. The first track is Sunrise Overture. It's a short instrumental piece of music for a chamber, small chamber orchestra. Uh, winds, strings, your piano. Lovely, absolutely gorgeous piece of music. As a matter of fact, back in my days of playing classical guitar, when I used to go to uh, you know, workshops, master classes, and things like that and perform, uh, I actually transcribed a Sunrise Overture for solo classical guitar and uh, wrote it all out in music and standard notation and I had to present it to the, you know, the, to the judges and, and then I would perform it for them and see how they liked it. I just thought the piece of music was beautiful and it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Then after that we get the title song, Calico Silver, Calico Silver from which I get my YouTube name, Calico Silver. Uh, this song was a nice introduction to the album, the whole story, it had talked about a farmer that left his farm and, and headed for the silver strike. No rain and the weather got warm. I broke down and I sold my farm. Headed for the silver strike. I took my wife, Calico Silver, give us life. Very, very beautiful song. Very, very nice. Then after that, we get Write Me Down, Don't Forget My Name. Talking about all the people that pass away and, and are forgotten by time. Like, just like most of us will be at some point. <laughs> and then we have The Way It Used To Be. That's the way it used to be. It's a song talking about all of the little things that, uh, that described life in Calico back in the eight, late 1800s early 1900s it's just a really nice short little song then we get a um, it says here the old west had its own version of the samson and delilah story and this is one that old timers around calico still claim is true madam delil and diabolical bill it's sort of a, a you know, bob dylan is type you know story you know um, that you would get lily rosemary jack of hearts type of thing you know it's a pretty good song then we get school teacher School teacher. Here's a picture of the school teacher to which the song refers right there. There she is. Uh, this was, I believe, the only single released from the album, and it didn't do very well, understandably, because even though it's a pretty good song and all, it, uh, it, it's written based upon the point of view of uh, late 1800s. You know, so it obviously has that, it's politically incorrect, perhaps a little bit, I don't know. I think it's a pretty cool song. Open the windows, Virginia. Let the wind blow the papers away. It's a good song. And then we get Road Agent, one of my favorites on the album. Road Agents were like uh, highwaymen, uh, outlaws, back in the day. They called them Road Agents. Here lies a road agent dead on a hill. Sing on, sing on, whip a will if you will. Really nice song. Beautiful. Then we get Sally Gray's Epitaph, another beautiful song about um, you know uh, a, a tombstone there in Boot Hill of the uh, Calico. Uh, the, the songs were taken pretty much verbatim from the tombstone. Here lies Sally Gray. She came to town one day. Wasn't long till she went astray. She leaves this town today for a better place we pray. Sally Gray. Good stuff. Then we get the song about Dorsey, the male carrying dog. <laughs> what a carrying dog. Talk about your carrying dog. Uh, and then we get Harbor for My Soul, a gospel song. And uh, this song I've heard other people sing, actually. So it, it extended beyond this album to other singers. It's a nice kind of a upbeat, in-your-face gospel song. Calico Saturday Night is a nice instrumental, you know. What it would, you know, uh, an impression of what you would see in Calico on a Saturday night, you know, at the saloons going full tilt, you know, the people drunk and having fun and the, you know, the girls and the whole bit, you know. It's a pretty good song. It's a great song. What am I talking about? Nice harpsichord. Trigger Happy Kid. Go ahead, crazy cowboy. 
It's about a cowboy who, who idolizes gunslingers and wants to go fighting and be a gunfing What an idiot, you know. But uh, it has that feel to it like uh, Kenny Rogers' songs later on, you know, when he became such a superstar. It has that sort of feel to it. Rachel Carling's Rubilator, about a con man rolling into town talking about some invention of his called the Rubilator, <laughs> trying to convince people to pay to see it and all. Then we got empty-handed compadres, you know, just empty-handed compadres. But the miners who can't seem to get make it make anything out of it, you know, that's the way a lot of the miners were, you know, the silver strike, gold strike people, never made much of it. Then we get a song called One Lonely Room. Oh, I love this song. I paid the rent. I came and I went. My life was spent in one lonely room. Perfect, uh, perfect uh, Kenny Rogers ballad. Really fits in really well with his singing style. Then we get rocking chair theme, which is just uh, you know rocking chairs squeaking, rocking on the front porch. Little little guitar playing, you know. Get you set into the next song, Old Mojave Highway, which is, like I said before, Interstate 15. At the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains, I see you smiling, grinning the grin of an idiot road to nowhere. Nice words. Yours is a straight smile with curves in all the wrong places. Oh, do you mind if I walk along aimlessly laughing like you? Speaking to the highway. Pretty cool song. Then we get uh, The Man Came Up From Town, a beautiful song, the last full song on the album. Listen to the lyrics, just really nice. The man came up from town with a pale look in his eyes. Turquoise oceans once in there were like the dying skies. The skies over ancient deserts where the towns cried, lay me down. And the wrinkles wore like hieroglyphics on the face of the man who came from town. It says here it's about uh, the remains of early men that were found in the Calico Mountains you know, and about people that uh, live in those towns like that, you know, gave birth to the towns, and towns gave birth to men, and on and on. And then the album ends on a reprise of Calico Silver, no ore in the richest mines, railroad closed down the line, nailed up your windows and your doors, and closed the stores, Calif Calico Silver is no more. Get the wagons ready to go. It's been a hundred years or so since we hitched up our teams, and it seems Calico Silver was a dream. Michael Martin Murphy. There we go. Anyhow, really great album. Enjoy it very much. Those of you who know the album know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's a great album. Nothing else like it out there. Nothing else, and it's a shame you can't find it on CD. You will be able to find it on vinyl, but it's becoming hard to find now that we have the vinyl resurgence. But you can hear it on YouTube, and you should be able to download the MP3s in various places. And I suggest you do so. Make sure you listen to it in order, though. You want to start with the Sun Sunrise Overture and go all the way down to the final uh, Calico Silver reprise, where the last thing you hear is the sound of the wind blowing. Really, really nice story told by a good band. Great musicians, Larry Kanzler, Terry Williams, Kenny Rogers, you know, John Hartford. Michael Murphy, Ken Vassy, Mary Arnold. Just some really good stuff there, folks. Okay, that's my review for today. And I hope you guys are doing well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.